like it is now. Um, so some of us who have been doing it for a long time, uh, like Nicole or myself, have been doing these OER uh, programs for a long time at Hudson Valley. We really had some uh, uh, resistance at the beginning. I think it was just because people didn't understand it. Okay, but I think at this point, I think people are really on board with it and um, are are less resistant to the idea. Uh, we had to start pilot programs at that point and, and really kind of prove that the OER materials and the OER programs that we had were just as good as the regular programs. Um, so I started a pilot program with the College Algebra and with Pre-Calculus um, and used OER materials for those classes and it went wonderfully. Uh, it's It was a really um, great experience and one that I wanted to bring to my other classes. And, uh, you know, after that, if I had a class that wasn't OER materials, I was like embarrassed to walk into the class the first day and say, yes, you have to buy a textbook. I'm so sorry. Um, but but it feels so good to not have to say that on the first day. Um, I've done everything with OER, not everything, but I've done a lot. I've done Blackboard uh, uh, materials, uh, um, you know, uh, homeworks through Blackboard with my OER material. I've tried to work with o, uh, My Open Math, which is a free website. Most of the, uh, I'll, go, I'll be quick. I know I only have a certain amount of time. Most of the OER material that you have available to you out there also have, you know, the web assigns and the, all the popular online um, homework management systems that are out there. Most of them you can you can have with the OER as well, as well as the like the Pearson books. Uh, most of them are linked to web design and all that kind of thing as well. So if you're somebody who likes that kind of thing, uh, they're they're um, available to you as well. I personally was resistant to using Lumen at first, but now I'm a big fan of Lumen. Uh, Lumen uh, is based on the MyOpenMath platform, and it's um, not free, but it's provided to you at no cost through uh, the SUNY system. And um, I'm running all my classes on Lumen now that it, they're all remote. And I just love it, and the students love it. I, I got, I you know, did my surveys at the end of the semester. Students, I asked the students, "What do you think about Lumen?" And they just thought it was amazing. So, so that's that's my little pitch. I'll let you go to the next person. That's great. Thank you so much, Walton, yep. for your your uh, your incredible enthusiasm. And um, just like I'm amazed by those numbers that go up every semester, your enthusiasm continues to grow. So, thank you. Yep. All right. So, so our next panelist um, is Nicole Arduini Van Hoos, and Nicole was going to start off by talking about what some of the uh, what are some of the benefits of using OER. Uh, hi. Uh, so I teach psychology. Uh, like Walton, I've been using OER uh, for about eight years now. Um, it actually started out of a necessity because the book that I was using went out of print. They're like, we're just not going to make it anymore. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I got to find something quick. And uh, and that's how I, I had, had been interested, but it kind of forced me. And so uh, ever since then, I've been um, adding and adding to my courses and, and um, adding more OERs. And last semester was the last course that I am teaching without uh, an OER. So all of my courses now from, from now on are OER courses. Um, so what are some of the benefits? Well, of course, the cost, right? Students love that. It's free or low cost. Um, first day access, right? No student is going to say, oh, well, I, I couldn't do the reading because my financial aid hasn't come in yet. I haven't been able to buy the book. Um, that's, that's a non-issue anymore. Um, complete customization. So uh, one of the things that I have built up to, and I will tell you, I didn't start this on year one, but now I'm to the point where everything that I use in my uh, OER courses is all completely customized. So I've been able to add, rearrange. Um, I, I add uh, uh, interactive activities and questions. I, in, I embed videos. I, I it, it's, it's a very dynamic book that I've created. It's taken me time though. Nobody's expecting you to do that on the first day. Okay. My first adoption was uh, two PDFs that I found that I said, here, read these, right? So um, uh, the other thing is that I've now been able to start engaging students in creating OERs. So uh, I started last spring with my adolescent psychology class and they have helped me um, create uh, an OER that I started with, with something that I created and they have contributed to it. And so I'm working now on making those modifications with student contributions and they now get to be um, OER authors. 
and uh, they were pretty excited about that project. I will make mention, um, I actually presented at the uh, open um, uh, uh, conference, the OER uh, SUNY conference this week on um, my uh, use with OERs in my adolescent psych class. And um, if you're concerned at all about um, whether OERs can be quality or whether you, students like them or find them useful, um, I just wanna share uh, two quick um, uh, things that I found from my students uh, in my, my class when I surveyed them about this. Uh, first is that, really quick, 56% uh, oh, of my students thought that the OER that I created was uh, equal in quality to any other textbook that they used. 33% uh, said that it was actually better than other textbooks that they've used um, for quality and for usefulness, 78% found the OER textbook useful uh, uh, in, in some way, some even found it uh, more useful than other textbooks that they've used. So uh, just because you're not using a publisher uh, printed textbook does not mean that students find it to be lesser quality or uh, less useful. Great. Nicole, thank you so much for, for sharing your experiences and for that data. That's great. I'm going to move on now to um, Sam Miller. And um, Dr. Miller, could you tell us about how your experience has moved from beyond adoption, much like Nicole's uh, has? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I, a lot of what Nicole says, you know, just right on board with what she said and couldn't agree more. Walton as well. Um, so. Um, Walter, um, Walton, you said that you were even embarrassed to go to class and say, okay, well, you, you've got to buy a textbook. So um, my experience with the Beyond OER was when um, SUNY uh, OER services um, gave me, you know, time and a, and, and, and a grant to create, um, you know, an abnormal psychology uh, book and course, so to speak. And so um, I spent about a year doing that and uh, and, and, and that was great. The creation process, uh, just even, um, I've done more since then with even Lumen Learning because then we went on to lifespan development and then they came out with the Waymaker course in abnormal psychology that I participated on as well. But um, just learning how to, that, to create these materials was um, uh, a game changer. So, you know, using your Google search to do an advanced search in the settings to find materials that you can use or share for free, things like that, um, even non-commercially. Um, and, and, and so finding all of these things that are out there for you to build, you know, a, a, a course, you know, um, or, or a book, so to speak. And so my advice now, um, after doing that, by myself and then also then contributing with other colleagues for Lumen Learning on the lifespan development and on their uh, abnormal psychology um, course, I would say in your departments, you could very easily do this as a team, right? Because the abnormal psychology OER that you know I'm using now and that the other colleagues in abnormal psychology are adopting, um, you know, I've been telling them, send me your material. You don't find what you what you like in what I put together. Send it to me. Let's work it out. So we're collaborating. Well, if you had, you know, an interest in this and you don't want to do it alone, because if I had give, been given the gift of time, I think I could have done something a lot better. But, you know, with the time that I had, you know, I did what I could, you know, and I, and I think I didn't do too badly. But do it together. So that collaboration with Lumen definitely showed me that you could collaborate with other colleagues in your department and you can put something together that's dynamite. Um, by writing a way to SUNY OER services, they'll send you back a platform for you know whatever you know course you're trying to to build. So now I you know I put in for some course creations. So I came up with like three course creations. And so like Walton, I was like, oh, I don't want to go and like have them, you know, buy a book when I know how to do this stuff. Right. So I wrote away to SUNY, had them send me a platform. I've got health psychology, cognitive psychology, everything that I learned creating my own abnormal and working with Lumen. Now, 
<laughs> I took those courses and I said, okay, I can find this stuff. I can find all of these resources that are free to use and share and create my own course and embed videos and make interactives and things like that. So like Nicole, that's you know what I did for, for my students. So I only have one more course that I need to transform into non-OER and, and then that's it. <laughs> Is there anything else you wanted me to say, Brenda? I'm not no, sure. No, that's great. Sam, that, that was wonderful. And um, I can't tell you how excited I was when last week I attended a webinar sponsored by Lumen Learning that featured your abnormal psychology textbook, encouraging faculty from across the nation to adopt it as an OER. So congratulations on your co-authorship of that, of that open textbook. That's really exciting. Thank, Thank you. you. So now we wanted to give Casey Ryan an opportunity to share her experience with challenges and obstacles of adopting OER. Thank you, Brenda. So I've been at the college for 10 years. I teach in the criminal justice department. I started with OER after attending a faculty workshop day seminar and training on it. And I started in fall 2019 with CRJS 103, which is the honor section of introduction to criminal justice. And then in the spring of 2020, which was probably a pretty bad semester to pick to start this, I started with an OER for CRJS 265, which is Correctional Services. One of the biggest challenges I started to run into when I began looking at OERs is in my discipline, there just wasn't a ton of great material out there. Uh, so one of the things that I did is with the introduction of criminal justice, I did, was able to find an introduction to criminal justice text that I used for fall 2019. And then I kept checking and looking to see what was out there. And so for fall 2020, I used a different OER for the introduction of criminal justice because another one had been created, had been added into the materials and it just worked better for what I wanted to focus students on. For correctional services, wasn't able to find anything. There was bits and pieces. And so I was able to bring in some OER texts in terms of about specific parts of the correctional service system. So there was a text on prisons, I could pull that in, but I still needed other pieces. So I actually wrote in a somewhat text-based OER that was available for students. My colleagues who were also teaching correctional services were able to use that. I created PowerPoints to go with it. And so I worked with my colleagues so that we would all be on the same page. And I use a lot of articles. I use the Marshall Project, which is a great resource, the Vera Institute of Justice. So I was able to bring in those. Now they're, they're not, they don't cost anything for students, but they don't technically count as OER. So I had that substantial OER portion that I was able to find to complement that those additional pieces. Another challenge that I found was student buy-in. And this kind of, I think about a lot of um, research on schooling and education and learning. And I kind of go back to Tayak and Cuban, the grammar of schooling, where from an early age, school is you sit at a desk, you open a book, and that's how you learn. And so not having a traditional textbook is something that students kind of have to unlearn that the only way I can learn in school is using a traditional text. So with the introduction of criminal justice students, their first semester, first year students. So it was kind of like, oh, you're in college. Look, college is different. We can use this cool resource. And so we walked through so many times. Let's access chapter one of the OER text. Here's how we might want to read it. I had reading guides for them also because they're first year students, but also here's how we might want to read this. Here's another article I posted. This is how this article complements the OER text. So it was a kind of a lot of walking students through that to get that buy-in. The correctional services students are mostly fourth semester students. So they're just want to get out of here. And a lot of them like the fact that they really enjoy the videos I have. They enjoy the outside articles, the real life articles. Um, and in addition to having that text, and because I wrote the text, it's similar in the language that I teach. So it's not reading a text by someone, then listening to a lecture by somebody else. It kind of all complements one another. So there are some challenges with finding a resource. 
And then there's some challenge of student buy-in, but nothing that can't be dealt with. Nothing that can't be dealt with. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for those um, for that reality check, Casey. Um, I'm happy to say that uh, our, the third portion of our program today, we're going to be talking about um, how to start looking for um, how to find OER resources, how to um, supplement those with some of your own materials, as you've heard from all of our uh, panelists today describe um, how they contributed some of their own uh, lecture notes and created works, and then how to also augment open with traditionally copyrighted materials, for example, that the library might have available to you. Okay, so we're getting a little short on time, but I'd like to just take two minutes from our break time and use it now to just ask you a couple of other questions. And um, any of you, any of the four panelists, if you'd like to just add um, um, how about if you share, what advice do you have for your colleagues? Yeah, I, I can answer that very quickly. Uh, the advice I would have is that you can make this as complicated or as easy as you want. I mean, a lot of the people on this panel, a lot of the people who have been into e OER are writing their own books, collecting their own materials, are, are making these wonderful works, which is great for them. And that's something you can do if you want, but you can also just adopt an OER book um, and and you know change uh, chapter by chapter how you want. You know uh, you don't have to be writing your own books here, and that's not what this is about. So as not to be scared off about collecting material from lots of different places. There's a lot of sources that have OER books that are very close to whatever Cengage book you're using right now. Um, so. So that's my advice is to, that there's there's always a that you don't have to make it as 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 hard as some of the other folks here. Great. Thank thank you for that, Walton. Uh Sam, go right ahead. Unmute yourself. Yeah, and it, it, so um yeah, so I a hundred percent agree with that because if you are lucky enough to have a lot of the general um level courses, OER is just out there just ready to use. And um anytime, so my advice would be. Anytime that you see a webinar that's proposed to get to know more about um, OER, jump on it. Just go ahead and listen and see how you can work the material, see what's out there. Um, and and, and that's, that would be my, my advice is just go ahead and answer those emails <laughs> that invite you to these different webinars to get more information. That's great. Thank you for that. And uh, we'll, you'll, you'll hear more from me and from Jen, Jen Eaton about that. Anything else from, um, from Nicole or uh, Nicole, anything you want to add about advice? Use your librarian uh, resources. <laughs> they, they, they know all sorts of like where to find things. And especially when you're first getting started, just be like, is there anything already? They probably already know that uh, or they can direct you where to go. Right. That's great, thank you. So um, thank you so much panelists. If you would just uh, please um, hang in there, uh, not even hang in there, please enjoy our keynote speaker who I'm gonna introduce in just a minute. And we're gonna hold all questions till after um, our keynote has spoken. So I know there's something in the chat and we're gonna get to that after that next portion. So um, again, uh, allow me to just um, switch my screen sharing here for just a moment and um, bear with me. Here we go. So I am delighted to introduce our keynote speaker today. And uh, we have the, um, the honor of, of hearing from um, Sherry uh, Chibongo, who is a professor. Yes, that was perfect. Did I get that right? You got that right. <laughs> I realized that was one thing we didn't talk about. Um, and I, uh, we're so fortunate to have uh, Professor Chibonga with us today. She is from Monroe County Community College. And allow me to just um, share some of her background with you before I turn the floor over to her. So um, I'm just trying to pull up my Word document here. Bear with me, here we go. Um, Sherry Chibongo is Distinguished Professor of Business and Entrepreneurship at Monroe County Community College in Rochester. She's also the owner of Innovative Business Advisors and has owned and operated various small businesses 
over the past 25 years and surely brings that entrepreneurship experience into the classroom. Um, she's the recipient of two national teaching awards, including the 2020 American Association of Community Colleges, Dale P. Purnell Faculty Distinction Award, as well as the 2010 National Institute for Staff and Organizational Development for Excellence in Teaching and Leadership. In 2019, Professor Chibanga was the recipient of the Dr. Wesley T. Hansen Award for Teaching Excellence at Monroe. It's the highest teaching award that the college grants to any of its faculty members. She's been an OER champion since 2012. And here's a little, few little known facts. She enjoys golf, pickleball, and spending time with her family. So I'd like to turn things over to Sherry, if I may. And um, I am also going to be the, doing the slides. Uh, Brenda, so, if you want me to do them, I can do them. Or if you want to do them, I'm okay with that as well. If you can do them, that would be wonderful. Well, okay. Let me give this a shot here. Okay. Uh, and so give me can't... give me the opportunity to yeah, uh, I think share. You can. So I'm going to click share. I think you can do it. Um, this is our this is all unscripted, everybody. We these are things we didn't get to practice. That's okay. That's all right. We're going to work this out. <laughs> now, can you all see my screen? Yeah. Just oh. yep. Okay. So now I just need to show here. Brenda and I, and when we initially talked about this, um, there we go. We talked about you doing them for me, but we can do this. I know. So first okay. of all, I am very, very, very happy to be here with you all. Brenda, I must say to you that you run a tight ship. <laughs> uh, I just love the level of organization that you brought to this event. And uh, once again, thank you all for inviting me. I'm going to move right into my presentation and I'll just be in front of you for all of 10 minutes and I look forward to answering uh, your, your questions. So let me set the stage. I'm not an OER expert. I'm not. I just have come forward to join the choir and share with you my experience in going from what I call myself an OER skeptic to an advocate. And so that's what I'd like to offer. And once again, I'm joining the choir and, and hopefully will also provide you with some level of encouragement to at least uh, consider OER. I'm not, so everything that I say going forward, I'm not paid. I was not paid to be here. I'm speaking to the it's speaking from the heart and I'm giving it to you as I experience my skepticism to moving to the other side, which is an advocate. So you see, look at that. Look at all those bricks. Heavy lift. OER has been around for a good while. Uh, you know, it's been buzzing around, buzzing around. And in 2015, I heard again, oh, you know, you need to consider OER. And I said, are you kidding me? With all the things that we're asked to do as a faculty member, OER, and I must admit that, uh, and somebody said it, I don't know if it, I don't know if it was Walton or someone said, I had, uh, misinformation about OER. I can't tell you where I picked it, picked it up, but, but what I had in my head was, wait a second, I've got to start from scratch. I heard that the material was uh, below par, uh, very little supporting material, and I needed to write a book, author a book. And I'm like, no, 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 I can't do it. Heavy lift on top of what, uh, what's on my plate, no can do. So fast forward, so that was in 2015. So fast forward, maybe I would say five, six months. Here are the things that started churning, uh, churning in my mind. Uh, and it was one of the first one, the first bullet on there was referenced. New, the state of New York and the State University of New York put out a call and basically said, hey, faculty, we've got a few dollars for you. Uh, 
uh, as a way to encourage you to consider OER. So I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Not a whole lot of, I looked at it, not a whole lot of money, but okay, at least there'll be some consideration for my time. Um, I desired to be promoted and I knew that I'd be going up for promotion in a few years. And uh, I don't know about you all, how it works at your institution, but obviously they are looking for one to go well above and beyond what you're doing. And so for me, I started looking around thinking about what can I do that I enjoy? Because I'm not going to do things just for the promotion. It's got to be something that I feel that will have an impact. And so that was turning in my head. And then I heard uh, that uh, SUNY was available to assist. And I think some of this information came from uh, uh, Brenda Bob from our librarian. And then I was told that, you know what? You really don't have to start from scratch. There may be a textbook out there for you, you to consider. So once again, what am I sharing with you? All of the things that I'm thinking about as I'm going, as I'm beginning to move to the other side. Um, my last point on this slide, many of you have already referenced it, but I cannot tell you the number of students that come to class, whether it be online or, or, or in, in, a, in a seated classroom, and they don't have their textbook for two, three, sometimes four or five weeks into the class. And I don't need to tell you all what that means, but it's, it wears on you. So again, all of this, I'm churning, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. So um, I started reaching out, trying to learn more. And sure enough, what did I, what did I find? Mm, not as heavy, not as heavy as a lift as I thought. I think, Walton, I think you made the, the point that one can make it as complicated as they like or take another approach. And so I obviously decided that I was going to look to see uh, what was, was around. Uh, so certainly, if I can do this to, to, to help with my promotion, if I can do this to provide a savings, uh, why not? Uh, why not do it? Uh, I'm not necessarily going in order here, but uh, it's also been referenced, and I learned this as well, that if you find something off the shelf, you can rearrange it. Uh, I was going to get assistance from our uh, 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 virtual campus center to integrate it into Blackboard. And the other two points that really came to me is that I really had to remind myself that there's not there's been no textbook that I've ever had that's been perfect. I don't, maybe you all have, but I've always had to add something to something I felt that I needed to um, uh, share with my students. And so I had my learning outcomes for my uh, management course in hand, and then I started looking at OpenStax, Lumen Learnings, and to make a long story short, I took the leap. I did it. <laughs> and what happened? The cost of the textbook went down from $200 to $20. The, I adopted the Lumen's uh, Learning Principles of Management textbook, and it actually covered 75% of my learning outcomes. And so I was prepared to do the supplement, which I've always done anyway but it had the PowerPoints, textbook, videos, in, uh, embedded right inside of the, of the, of the ebook. And so in 2017, I adopted that textbook and it was available to my students. On the first day of class, I sent, a, I sent an email out letting them know that it was ready. It was there for them. And guess what? I still got a few emails saying, I don't have the textbook. I said, well, did you get my email? It's available to you today. So I got to tell you, that made me feel good. Uh, and I, uh, so that was in fall of 2017. And then in 2018, I expanded it to my seated uh, management course as well. 
But let me share with you all what I did not have a full understanding of when I took this leap. As I said earlier, I adopted the Lumen's Learning Principles of Management book, but they have something called Waymaker. And if I, if, I, if I told you I fully understood it at the beginning, I'd be telling you a story. But let me tell you about this. So this Waymaker is a personalized learning platform and, and it's working behind the scenes to track what students are learning, what are, they, what are, what are some of the challenges. Uh, there's a study plan. Uh, uh, there's a section where they talk about why this matters. Again, there are videos in, uh, embedded right in the in the book. There are pretests, then there are quizzes, and in fact, uh, uh, Waymaker is based on giving students two attempts, no time limit. I was a little skeptical about that, but now I do that with all of my classes. But here's the bonus. There's a feature based on parameters that I've set. Meaning, for example. Um, I think anybody who uh, scores less than 70% uh, on the quiz, that's, that's where uh, I'm there's an email that's going to be generated. Uh, I think 85 and above, that they're doing well. And so you, you get these automatic, automatic emails being generated in my voice. They offer uh, uh, two different tones. I'm more of the, the coaching style. And I have to tell you that my relationship with my students as a result of using uh, an OER textbook that has Lumen, uh, the Waymaker attached to it has been down outright, down outright awesome. And as I told you earlier, I'm not paid to come here to share this with you. I just have two... Um, emails that I'd like to share with you. And I really, and I, and I uh, be, as I was preparing my notes, I just did a, just a quick skim and I can tell you that I probably get one a week from the students, from these automated uh, messages that go out whenever they take the quiz. And I told them, no, you know, I mean, it's presets class, but th that doesn't matter to them. You know, th these, when they take it, immediately there's a message that says, so dad, that was, Fantastic work on the decision-making quiz. Keep up the good work, Professor T. Three o'clock in the morning, but automatically generated. Here's what she wrote back. I've got to move my, uh, the, uh, the gallery. Professor, hi, Professor, thank you. It means a lot. I took the time to review everything and I appreciate how involved you are with your students. I've had minimal professors that are like this. I'm so glad I have you for two of my classes. I hope you have a great weekend. Again, thank you for everything. You're a great professor. Here's the next one, and then I'll be closing in just a few minutes here. Okay, let's see, this is in the way here. Oops, one more here. Um, and this one was at the outset of this semester, but at least once a week. This is from, again, my automated message, Brian. That was a fant fantastic work on the introduction to management qu quiz. Keep up the great work. Professor Chibangu, thank you so much. I'm very much looking forward to hearing more throughout the course. I appreciate your email. Have a good night. Once a week. So definitely stronger relationship with the students. And so those surveys from those classes, wonderful feedback. And let me just share a few other points with you in closing. I got my promotion. Thank you very much. I can say to you all that I definitely understand how you might be hesitant, but I want you to just to take a minute to reflect on all of what your colleagues have said the level of support that's there, that you can get to decide the level at which you will want to engage at OER. But I encourage you to take the leap. And if you have the same experience that I have, meaning 
you know, no perfect, uh, textbook perfect, do what most of us do, which is just a supplement. So again, look for that ready to adopt content as a way to um, make it maybe easy for yourself. I've shared with you significant savings uh, that's available to the students as a result of a decision that we make as educators. Um, and I, those, those are just two emails that I shared with you in terms of greatest connection with, with, with my students. And finally, there is a wonderful community of supporters. I think you know that you're going to get support from your colleagues, uh, from Brenda Hazard, Michael Daly. Uh, there's also a work, uh, an OER uh, a workplace group. And take the leap. You are going to be pleasantly surprised at what you'll find. And so I thank you all for allowing me to spend a few minutes with you. I welcome your questions. Professor, thank you so much for that inspiring, that inspiring message. Thank you. Um, so now we'll take- now, let, me check, let me stop sharing my screen. Okay. I just stopped. All right. And now, <laughs> thank you so much. You got a round of applause here in the, in the gallery. Oh, well, thank you um, all. But I told you, I wasn't paid. I just- mm. No. And thank oh, can you. I just say one other point before you go on? And I know how tight you are on time. The last, since COVID, it's been the, the level of stress, the level of needs of our students, at least in my experience, has gone up exponentially. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the email, I can't get through the financial aid. I can't get, get through to the bookstore. <clears throat> and it wears on you, but to, in the middle of all this, to get a message from a student telling, a student telling you because of this automated Waymaker system, Ms. T, thank you. Thank you for caring that I even took the quiz. I find it uplifting. So that's all I wanted to add. Thank you all again. Thank you. So let me now open the floor to questions and we're, I'm gonna um, devote about eight minutes to questions now. You're welcome to unmute um, or post a question to the, um, to the chat. And I'll tell you what, I will just start off by um, responding to a chat question. And that was, how does the authorship of an OER text work versus traditional authorship? Um, well, Casey, one of the things that's available for faculty to do is to assign what's called a Creative Commons license to material that they wish to contribute to open, um, to the open universe. And so um, they, uh, that, that's one option. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the next section of the workshop. If you, I don't know if I answered your question. Um, I was pretty brief, um, but that's a start. And I can uh, expand upon that later on or outside of the workshop. Other questions that our attendees have for, for our panelists or for Professor T. Really? Okay. <laughs> it's just so thorough. <laughs> I, just hope, I, I just hope a few more of you thorough. consider it. That's all I've got to say. Yeah. At least the lumen just for math. It. I'm sorry? Is the lumen just for math? Because I tried to, to look it up and the website wasn't working. So. Oh, no. Well, where's Michael Daly? Michael, you still on the call? He is. I am. Oh, you take that question. I know what I know I what's out there. Put, I had to go um, look. Would you answer that question? In, in the chat, I'll put a link. It's a great starting point. I know Brenda and her team are going to walk you through some starting places to begin to looking at OER resources later. Um, but the ready to dot catalog that Sherry mentioned in her great presentation is oer.suny.edu. And that's really geared at where our, our funding from New York State legislation comes from. It's geared at SUNY's um, general education high enrollment courses. Um, so you'll see kind of the, the traditional, perhaps soon to be changed, uh, general education disciplines in there. So business, social sciences, math. English, humanities, communication, um, technology, some transitional other mm -hmm. transitional studies categories. So think about uh, co-rec courses or college success courses or first year experience courses. Um, but certainly we're not just limited to math or, or business. Uh, we try to represent is, the diversity. But is the lumen just for math? 
Nope. Lumen, no. has, th Lumen has three okay. specific platforms. So Walton mentioned one earlier called OHM, Online Homework Manager. That's for math okay. and quantitative questions. So physics and chemistry faculty sometimes use there. The other two platforms or containers um, that faculty have available to use are Candela, which is an ebook essentially, uh, allows you some editing. And then what Sherry was talking about, which is kind of uh, OER with a little muscle behind it, Waymaker. Um, and that kind of varies um, depending on the disciplines that are available, but definitely not just for math. And Sarah, Sarah, I'm going to uh, walk you through some of those um, in the next portion of, of our workshop today. And I did happen to find a couple of other sources I, um, in, related to criminal justice in some other platforms as well. So we'll take a look at those too. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, and there's a question, are quizzes part of OER resources? Yes, they are, um, Casey. Um, some of the uh, um, platforms like Lumen have test banks that are um, associated with them and that faculty have access to. And in other, um, in other, there's other resources where you can just go and find OER quizzes. So I'll show you some of those sources. Often those are called OER repositories. They're large collections. And um, I'll show you Merlot and OER Commons. Um, that have collections of uh, open quizzes that are available for you to reuse or to revise and so on. Other questions? Yeah, can go I ahead, Jason. Just really quick? Oop, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Oop, I've had one thing with that, that, that last question. Yeah, about I, the I think quizzes. One thing, that, one thing that I think uh, professors who are just new to this get confused is that there's a difference between the OER material, the book, and the supporting materials that come with it. Um, so uh, there's there's a lot of materials out there that are released that you can adopt and not use any of the supporting materials at all if you don't want to. You just use this book and then use the support, supporting materials that you have already. But a lot of the books out there, um, I'm thinking of OpenStax. OpenStax is one of the big national uh, well-known uh, open uh, educational resource materials out there. Um, they come with prepackaged uh, online management systems that you may want. So they, I think that the book I was looking at had 30 different choices of management systems that you could choose between. Most of them cost the student a between uh, $25 and $40, which is, you know, how much your tolerance is for free materials. You know, then you're charging the student something. Um, I eventually went to Lumen because it's paid for by SUNY, but Mooney is just, Lumen is just one of the many options that are out there to go along with the book. There's a difference between the book and the supporting material. Okay, that's all I need to say. Thanks, Walton. Jason, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I may be jumping the gun on the process here. This may be stuff you're going to cover in the second or in the later portion, but um, I teach in the digital media department and, and my baby is the animation course, which I developed. And we use the text, the textbook that we use for that sort of um, a widely accepted sort of Bible of the practice of animation, mm -hmm. but it's costly. And I, I don't know if there are resources and I, I'm very much interested in the opportunity to develop some resources um, that would be free and available for other folks. And I, I have a team, I could develop, get a team of interns to help me illustrate the thing. I think that could all happen. And I'm very much interested in learning about the process of developing resources. Great. And, and that's where I'll, I may end up referring you to SUNY OER services about uh, for, for more information about development and publication. Um, that that's kind of exceeds my area of expertise, um, but we will hand you off to experts. Um, what I can tell you, Jason, is that you are thinking like many other faculty who are, you know what, we may have a Bible, but it's expensive and I can do something that's um, maybe almost as good for and save students a lot of money. And you're, you're gonna see some platforms that are available and, and uh, places where you can follow up to do this. Mike, anything you wanna add to that? No, I think your answer is exactly right, Jason. We do yep. work with, um, this is probably why we partner with Carnegie, Carnegie Mellon's Open Learning Initiative. They're really interested in kind of the uh, horrible term here, the mad scientists that are out there that do wanna do that creation that have uh, an ecosystem of students, of interns. Um, that's where we really see some, some positive things happening. And I think um, Nicole and her, uh, when she was speaking on the panel, um, does a lot of that uh, 
participatory education in, in, in her courses and certainly in your discipline um, that, that fits very well. So certainly open to those conversations. Yeah, great, great question. You guys are, you're so far ahead of just um, adopting. You're thinking about not only adapting, adapting, but producing and creating, and that's really wonderful and exciting. Um, so uh, there was a question in the chat about materials and other and languages other than English. And when um, when I uh, when we uh, reconvene in a few um, after uh, two forty five, and we get into some of the repositories that are out there. Whoops, that's my timer to make stay to stay on on time here. Um, I'll show you some of those. There are some, um, uh, not so much ESL, but learn it for English language speakers to learn Spanish and French and some of the other um, modern languages that are commonly taught. There's a number of OERs about that, but I'll show you <coughs> in some of the uh, platforms, or please remind me, um, Elizabeth, to show you those in some of the other um, sources that we'll take a look at. Okay, so in the interest of being able to take a break and getting up and stretching your legs, um, we are going to um, stop here. We're going to take a 10 minute break and we are going to reconvene at 2.45 and get ready at 2.45 to jump in. And thank you all for the opportunity to spend uh, an hour or so with you. I wish you all well. Bye-bye now. Analyst, Professor T and our four Hudson Valley people. See you at 245. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you.